How's it going everyone? My name is Mulder and welcome to GameCron, your number one stop for tips and tricks on your favorite video games. Today we're going to be talking about Pathfinder Kingmaker Gameplay Tips and Tricks Part 1. In this video, I'll go with you step by step on how to set up your character at the very beginning of the game, what are some good and fun interesting ways you can set up the overall difficulty of the game for you, how to set up character formations, and what you can expect to run into for the first five to six hours of the game. All that and more straight ahead. If you enjoy this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for a lot more. We'll be doing a huge series of tips and tricks videos on this game, but let's get started with our first one, Pathfinder Kingmaker Gameplay Tips and Tricks Part 1. Let's start things off with how to set up your character and what the different paths you can choose to design this character to your liking. Now there are nine character classes you can choose from. Each one of these character classes will have a different way of how the world's going to react to you depending upon which class you pick. For example, if you pick a half orc, half human character, most likely society will not treat you very well given the fact of what you look like, compared if you were to say play as a human or even a halfling. Each character class also has their own unique abilities, for example, halflings have better luck in battle in terms of their chances of either dodging incoming attacks or having successfully unlocked a different spell or using a certain attack on the field. Some character classes perform better in combat, but it all depends upon what character you want to pick that best fits your playstyle. The game will tell you on the right hand side of the screen about what different characters offer different unique abilities depending upon what race you choose. Once you've picked out of the 9 different character classes, now it's time to look at different types of roles that character can play out of the 16 available in the game. These different roles can range between playing as a sorcerer, a wizard, an inquisitor, slayer, barbarian, a monk, a cleric, and just about anything else you can imagine in an RPG realm. Just like with the character screen, these different character classes offer unique and different abilities depending upon which one you choose. Now say for example if you choose to play as an Inquisitor, there's actually four different types of archetypes you can pick depending upon this character class and that goes for all the different classes you can choose. This part of the game is something that you really need to focus on and choose wisely. Because depending upon what character class you choose and what archetype you choose is really going to decide whether or not this game is going to be easy for you or rather difficult down the road if you picked a character class that you weren't quite sure about. Frontline fighters such as Bar Barbarians, Slayers, Monks are some of the best characters you can run around the field with for hand-to-hand -hand combat. Now if you want to focus more on healing your party and casting spells, Wizards, Sorcerers, Celtics, and even Inquisitors are great to pick for these type of roles. Now because there are different archetypes within each character, you can even go so far as to play as a rogue character that can even cast spells depending upon which character class you choose. Really take your time and read into the information of what these character classes have to offer on the right hand side of the screen. Now say for example you decide to pick as the Inquisitor class. Now after you've picked your character, now is the time to decide what type of heritage your character comes from. Heritage plays a big role in whatever character class you've chosen. Each character class depends upon what type of race of character you picked. For example, the tiefling character that I chose for this game has different types of darkness, evil, and shadowistic heritage that I can choose from that each offer their own unique bonuses depending upon which character I picked. These heritages can range by adding more willpower, more strength to your character, with also different types of pros and cons depending upon which heritage you choose. This is another important part of the game where you definitely want to take your time and decide which ones you want to go for. Now it's time to pick your deity, which is going to be important for you if you're playing as a spell casting character. If you're more of a frontline fighter type of character like a vanguard, a monk, or a warrior, you actually don't have to worry about doing this part, but you will have your own separate choice to do in just a moment. Picking a deity is a god that plays well in your favor. A deity is a god that is best going to unlock certain abilities for you depending upon what time you need the help of that god. Some deities offer bonuses in casting spells, your overall strength output, what type of defenses you have on your character, or even more simple things like say your willpower, your charisma, your intelligence, to even how you talk to certain types of characters, or overall how your strength and defenses are on your character. Definitely try to pick a deity that is going to give you bonuses for certain types of weapons that you want to use for your character. For example, one deity gave me a boost in my scythe weapon that I chose to use for my Inquisitor class character just because that was her favorite weapon to use as that god. You'll notice down below what type of bonuses the god is going to give you along with the fact of what favorite weapon they like to see you use. Using that favorite weapon while getting these type of bonuses adds a lot more strength and power to your character when that god is in your favor. Now for those of you out there that don't have to worry about picking a deity as your choice, you actually have something else now to do which is called weapon focus. Now weapon focus is a particular trait that your character will focus on depending upon what weapon you want them to use. These weapons can range from anything from great swords to daggers to staffs to scythes to bows and arrows, crossbows, you name it. It basically gives you the option for your character to be wise and very good with whatever weapon that is your favorite weapon to use in this game. You can even set up bonuses to your character depending upon what weapon they like to use. If you keep on upgrading your character with different types of crossbows because you want them to be a good 
good archer, you're definitely going to pay this off very well if you focus that as your weapons choice. Now let's talk about your domain. Now the domain is a place where your character originally comes from. This will be an option for you to choose if you pick a spell casting type character or a unique archetype depending upon what you've chosen. Domains again offer bonuses to your character depending upon which one you pick that you think is best for your character. There's no quick way to choose which one of these is best for your character. It really just comes down to the, your preference. If your character is going to be straightforward like that, it's much easier for you to set up your domain, heritage, and deity choices than it is to say if you were to pick a monk who's not only good with hand-to-hand -hand combat but you want to focus on them having good spell casting too. Really take your time and design the character that best fits your play style and how you want their story to be. You can always look on the right hand side of the screen to read up of what these different options offer you. Don't worry about having to have this absolutely perfect. You can upgrade your character as the game goes along, along with the fact that you can go back and retrain your character at any time during the game during certain key moments. So don't feel like you're permanently stuck with this character's abilities once you start spending their points. Speaking of points, let's talk about ability points next. Now there are six different types of tiers that you can spend your ability points on. Strength, which is all about physical power for your character. Dexterity, which is your ability and reflexes for say you dodging or jumping or traversing around the battlefield depending upon what is happening on the field. Constitution, which focuses on your health and stamina. Basically it's your giant health bar, but also it depends upon your hit points. Next up is intelligence, which focuses on helping your character learn. This can range between learning different types of spells to attack maneuvers a lot faster, but even opens up different types of dialogue trees depending upon how high your intelligence is. Wisdom focuses heavily on your willpower, awareness, and also your common sense. So the higher your wisdom is for your character, the better off your character is going to do in terms of conversations with other characters, but also overall awareness on the battlefield. They can pick out certain weak points on certain enemies depending upon how high their wisdom is. Next one is charisma, which is about your personality, your magnetism, and your ability to lead other characters. The higher your charisma is, the better off you're going to do in conversations with other characters in terms of reaching deals. For example, a merchant's trying to sell you an item and you have the opportunity to bring the price down on an item, or if say, you, for example, you run into a group of bandits that want to take you a slave, but you can actually either talk them out of it or scare them away, all depending upon how high your charisma is. You'll notice there will be a plus two or a minus two or minus three or minus one, depending upon wherever it is on the chart. This is indication as to where your character's strengths lie from the choices you've made so far before you got to this screen. Now, I recommend that you should focus on making sure your character has high stamina and high health. If you're more of a frontline character, I recommend you focus highly on your dexterity and your overall strength by adding points into that. If you're focusing on being a healer or a spellcaster, definitely up the ante on your intelligence and charisma and also with your wisdom. Constitution is the only one that should always get a lot of points no matter what character class you choose, because this game can definitely be brutal and unforgiving. Always keep in mind that the plus or the minus will be added on to whatever points you have currently on that number. For example, if you have plus two in your wisdom, but your wisdom is at 10, you actually get 12 wisdom total. But say for example, you have nine strength, but you have a negative two in there, it actually drops down to seven. So definitely always add points to where you see negatives and add a few points where you see your pluses, but focus a lot on making sure you have a decent amount of health no matter what character class you choose. Next up is your skill points. Now skill points can be added to your athletics, mobility, trickery, stealth, knowledge of the arcane, knowledge of the world, lore nature, lore religion, perception, persuasion, and use magic device. Again, the game will show you where your highest points are in these categories to where your character's current strengths lie. You can also tell where your character's strength lie in this category if you see a green thumbs up logo next to any of these different types of categories. Definitely spend your starting skill points in areas to where you feel your character would best benefit. Athletics is about how well your character can traverse around the field, mobility in terms of their speed and flexibility, trickery is more focused on thievery, stealth of course is stealth, knowledge of the arcana is actually focused on magic but also trying to diverse the area and seeing where magic has been left over. So if your character is like an inquisitor who can track the area, having a good knowledge of their arcana is a definitely a good bonus. Knowledge of the world gives your character an overall insight and wisdom of running into other characters from all across the world, which definitely helps you in dialogue trees. Lower nature becomes in tune with nature around you to where you can kind of tell if there are certain animals or disruptions in the woods. Lower religion, depending upon where your character comes from, focuses on that particular type of religion or gives you a better understanding of different religions you're going to meet in the game. Having high perception allows your character to see little details in the world surrounding them. They can oftentimes sniff out danger or success depending upon how high your perception is. This can go both towards in the middle of combat to even having conversations with other characters, which opens up different types of dialogue trees as well, which also adds a bonus to persuasion. Having high persuasion allows you then to sweet talk your way through any type of dangerous situation you can think of or for example if you're having a cheery conversation with a character because your persuasion is high you can actually unlock different areas of the conversation that you normally wouldn't if you didn't have high persuasion you'd be having a chatting conversation with a merchant then out of nowhere you can actually get a deal on better loot or better yet you can convince the character to commit a robbery for you depending upon how you have your character designed and then finally is use magic device this allows you to use different types of magical devices such as spells 
or different types of items that you'll find throughout your adventure. Again, structure this around your character that best fits depending upon how the game currently has a lot of the numbers lined up for you. Next up is feats depending upon if your character has this option or not. These range from your armor, melee, and spells depending upon what requirements are needed for this feat to activate. For example, some feats were actually required for not only you but another ally in your party to have that same exact feat for it to be activate. So make sure you pick the right feats bonuses that best fit your party depending upon the playstyle you're going with. If you want to get defensive, pick defensive bonus feats. If you want to go for all out attack feats or different types of bonus spell ones, focus on those as well. It all depends on you. You could also run into the opportunity of picking different types of attacks and spells, which is going to be the next category you can decide in. But again, this is all depending upon your character class that you've chosen, so some people may not get the same exact categories as others will. I definitely noticed that melee characters have a much more straightforward unlocking path than spellcasters do. Now let's talk about alignments, which will be the next thing your character can pick. The alignments your character can focus on is Lawful Good, Neutral Good, Chaotic Good, Lawful Neutral, Neutral, Chaotic Neutral, Lawful Evil, Neutral Evil, and Chaotic Evil. Anything in the good category focuses heavily on your character doing good things for its citizens. Lawful means that you're always just, you never break your word. Chaotic Good is where you focus on causing a little bit of chaos, but it's all for the greater good. Now if you choose to be in the gray area to where sometimes you want to take advantage of being evil, but also doing good things as well, being neutral is your best bet. I personally am focusing right now as being lawful and neutral, to where for me, as far as I'm concerned, I'll always hold up my word in the end of a bargain, but depending upon the current situation, I have no problem executing people or sparing them given what type of situation I'm in. Now for some of you out there that just want to be an absolute evil character, anything you pick in the evil category will definitely work for you. One thing to keep in mind is that depending upon how you've structured your character before you get to this point, either all of these will be open for you to select or only a certain number of alignments will be unlocked for you, depending upon how your character is. After you've chosen what your alignment is, you'll be able to choose a voice for your character. You'll have to name them and give them also their date of birth. Once the birth has been chosen and everything is set, the game will then show you a list of everything you've chosen and definitely read over it to make sure everything is set to what you want it to be. Again, don't worry about making this absolutely perfect, especially if you're new to this type of game. You always have the opportunity to go back and reskill your character during certain moments of the game. So don't worry about it if you think you've made a bad choice. But let's quickly talk about what type of game options you should have running in this game to make your life a lot easier. First off, go in the option menu and then go to your game settings. You're going to want to go to an area where it talks about different types of pauses that can happen in the middle of the game. These pauses can happen in the midst of combat or before combat starts. You have the option to turn these on or off depending on what you choose, but I definitely recommend there are at least two of them you should always have on. You definitely want to turn on auto pause for when combat starts and when an enemy appears. The reason why it's so important to have these two activated is because during certain moments of the game you could find yourself easily outnumbered. It's important to have these two activated that way in case any new enemies show up on the field the game will pause giving you a chance to fix your strategy. This will be a lifesaver for you especially if you're new to this game and at the beginning when your character is so squishy. The game's difficulty can definitely be unforgiving. Which brings me to my next point. Point. What will make or break your experience about this game is what difficulty setting you have set. Now there are tons of options to where you can customize the game depending upon how much damage your characters can take on the field, how much damage your enemies can give out to you throughout the remainder of the game, but the biggest thing you should always make is how you want your game difficulty settings to be set at. Now personally for me, I've played some Pathfinder and Dungeons and Dragons games before with my friends, so currently right now I have my difficulty set at normal. But if you've played games like Pathfinder and Dungeons and Dragons before, along with Divinity Original Sin, even Baldur's Gate, then I definitely recommend you pick the hard harder difficulty settings. Hard mode and challenging are definitely up your alley if you've played those games before and you're looking for a tough challenge. Unfair, in all honesty, is very brutal. I only recommend that mode for the most diehard fans who want to give it a try. Now if you're new to Pathfinder before, you've never played a game like this before and you want a much easier time, definitely pick either easy mode or even story mode. Now story mode makes things 10 times easier without having to worry about doing so much of that micromanagement stuff. But even if you are new to this type of franchise but you want to give things a little bit more of a challenge, definitely try out normal mode. Now let's quickly talk about character formations and what type of characters you should always have in your party regardless of what character you've built for yourself. Now character formations are things to where you can design for your characters the moment battle starts. The way I have mindset is that I have my frontline fighters, which of course is my character Vanguard, a barbarian, and a warrior class character on the front lines. Behind them I have my two archery characters characters giving them support, while my middle character is casting magic. The reason why I have my spellcaster in the middle is that it allows her to also cast healing spells in a wide area thanks to all my characters being so close to each other in this formation. You can set these formations any time of the way you want, but I definitely recommend you set these formations up in a strategic way. Heavy hitting tank characters should always be up in the front, 
archers giving the support from behind or on their flanks, while also having your spellcaster in the middle. If you have any rogue characters, have them turn invisible and have them go around flanking the enemy. They'll always get bonuses for striking enemies from behind with every character formations you have chosen. You definitely want to have a cleric or some type of healer with your team from start to finish. Healers are so important in this game, I cannot tell you regardless of what difficulty setting you've chosen. Make sure you have at least one healer running around in your field with your main party at all times. Now what you'll be finding for the first 5 to 6 hours of this game is actually going to be a lot of barbarian characters running around, thieves, slave traders, and different monsters running around the forest. I definitely recommend you should go as far west as you possibly can. You'll be able to find different types of ruins that can help you unlock different types of bonus activities that has to do with the main mission. You can also unlock new characters along this way as well pretty quickly if you decide to travel around going west. There is a slave trader party around this area so definitely be careful, they'll be the highest ranked enemies you'll be fighting in this game so far. I'll be focusing heavily on giving out more information on these different type of characters along with what upgrades I'm currently focusing with them along with my main character in my later videos. I hope this video was helpful for you to give you a quick idea of how best to set up your character at the very start of this game before you dive into the main campaign. Definitely take your time, read through all the information that is needed on these different character classes and decide which one best fits for you. I'll be giving you more in-depth looks at some of the bosses you'll be encountering in this game along with how my journey is going so far in this game from start to finish. I'll also be talking about the Kingdom Management System and our Pathfinder Kingmaker Gameplay Tips and Tricks Part 2, so be sure to stick around. I hope this video helped you out and if it did, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for a lot more. There are more videos on the way for this game, but definitely stay tuned because we'll be covering new games coming out after this game such as Marvel's Avengers, Star Wars Squadrons, Watch Dogs Legion, Cyberpunk 2077, and a lot more. We cannot wait to share a bunch of these new top games with you very soon. I'm Mulder, and I'll see you next time in the Game Cron.